As we begin today, I want to review over a couple of trig functions we began graphing yesterday. And uh, yesterday, we finally got to the tangent of x. And uh, the tangent of x is a little bit different than sine and cosine in that the period of the tangent curve class is only pi. pi. So by the time you get pi, you're done with one full period of the tangent curve. That said, we graph two periods just so we can graph to two pi like we did for sine and cosine. Don't want tangent to feel like it's getting shortchanged or something. Um, we also noted that the domain of the tangent is not all real numbers like it is for sine and cosine. It does kind of keep going and going and going with a little whoop, whoop, whoop over and over and over again, but there were interruptions all along the way. So we said that the domain of tangent class is all real numbers except I. where and numbers I over two I. I. N pi over 2. And when n is odd. When n is odd. And at all of those odd pi over 2s, 1 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, when you go backwards, negative 1 pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, and so forth. What do we draw on the graph where there's that break in the graph, where there are no defined values of x? Dotted line. That dotted line, and we call it an asymptote. A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. Uh, I mentioned this before, but this is a great word for hangman because you have five consonants in a row. And I don't know that there are any other words in the English language like that with five consonants in a row. So like everybody in hangman guesses T, guesses E first, right? Well, there's your E at the end. That's no help. Then everybody guesses A. Okay, there's an A at the beginning. Uh, I, and you, you know, hang something. E, o, okay, there's an O. And just looking at the word like, what in the world? That, you know, nobody really knows about asymptotes. Um, there was one time we were doing some sort of like nerdy party thing with honor society people and they, one of the teams picked their team name for the asymptotes because they said, you can't touch this. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, that was pretty smart actually. <laughs> nerdy, yes, but smart. Craig you know? uh, Anyway, <laughs> uh, then of the range. All the numbers. Is all real numbers. So remember, that's not true for sine and cosine. It goes back and forth between negative one and one. But here, whoop. And it starts over here, whoop, all the way up, all the way down, right? All real numbers for the range. Um, the key points zero. for the tangent. Zero, A, zero, A, zero. Good, zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote, zero. And it does help if we had a few more points than that. One. In the first quadrant and in the third quadrant, exactly halfway between the zeros and asymptotes, positive, positive ones. ones. And in the sec third, second, and fourth quadrants, negative ones. negative ones exactly halfway between, which means it doesn't go perfectly on a grid, on a grid intersection, but it does go on a grid line at least, so that's helpful. One thing I did not point out yesterday, and I want to kind of show this to you real quick. We said we're starting at zero, asymptote three boxes later, zero, three boxes later, asymptote three boxes later, zero. I said halfway between, we've got a one, halfway between negative one, halfway between one, halfway between negative one. So if we were just drawing the graph, um, this is as much as we drew, but you realize it could keep going, right? I mean, this would be that, another asymptote, and then um, that, and another asymptote. Where's the symmetry here? Through the origin. Through the origin. Quadrants one and three match. Quadrants two and four match. Come over here, they mirror across the origin, across the origin. So we would say the tangent then class is an as origin symmetry. Even is, is y-axis or f of x-axis symmetry. So the other one, odd function. Jot that down in your notes if you would. This is not something I pointed out yesterday and realized as I was preparing for this lesson. Ooh, I hadn't mentioned that yet. But tangent is an odd function. Tangent is an odd function. So if you go negatively, you also go negatively on the y, okay? Or f of x, right? So forward x goes upward, backward x goes downward. And again, unless you go far enough, then as soon as you get past the asymptote, this is upward and that's downward. So it's always opposing, so it would be an odd function, meaning f of negative x is equal to the negative tangent of x, okay? Um, you don't necessarily have to write that down, but just know that it is an odd function that is important to point out. Let's consider now the, uh, the cotangent. Now that I've scribbled all over everything, let's consider the cotangent of x. 
And we said the period of the cotangent curve class. Once again, it's only pi. So it's going to be going to mirror everything we saw the tangent doing as far as uh, that goes. But it, it, what's the relationship between tangent and cotangent? They're reciprocals of each other. So um, again, where the tangent's going up, the, uh, the cotangent will be going down. But they'll still be positive in the same quadrants, negative in the same quadrants. Um, the domain changes, though, for the cotangent curve. There we go. Same idea, except now it's the even n pi over 2. It's the even pi over 2s, which end up being whole pi. So as we divide even by 2, it comes to a whole number, right? An integer. But whole integer pi is basically get your those dotted lines That's where there's the asymptotes. exceptions, the asymptotes, right? The exceptions to the graph, the, the gaps in the graph, if you will, take place there. Those asymptotes at the n pi over 2 and n is even. What about the range of the cotangent? That's going to be all real numbers because, again, it's just going to ooh, all the way down, of course, all the way up. So all real numbers. So, again, mirrored ranges, similar domains, matching periods. Um, what about the key points? S still zero, S still zero, S still zero. Good. Starts at the asymptote, then zero, asymptote, zero, asymptote. The exact opposites of these key points, or the reciprocals, I guess we should say, of these key points. Um, and then, of course, still in the first and third quadrants, we're going to have positive ones in the second and fourth quadrants, mm -hmm. negative ones. So the ones and negative ones are in the same spots because reciprocals of one the same thing, but the asymptotes and zeros switch places. So if we were to look at this graph, we start at the asymptote, then a zero, then asymptote, then zero, then asymptote at the two pi, at the pi, pi over two of course is zero, three pi over two is zero. And then halfway between a 1 and a negative 1, a 1 and a negative 1. And so the graph, remember, is going to curve up toward the asymptote there, down toward the asymptote there. That's a horrible placement of points. Well, anyway, if it were graphed perfectly, but you get the idea, right? It says, ooh. All right, well, we could do it go backwards as well, right? There's another 0, there's another asymptote at the negative pi. And so we get a curve that looks something like that. Where's the symmetry? It's still at the origin, right? As you go to this side, it's way up high. You go to this side, it's way down low. Starts to come down, starts to come up, so that these two quadrants mimic each other, then these two quadrants mimic each other. So once again, you've got origin symmetry, which means cotangent is an odd function also. Cotangent is also an odd function. So sine and cosine, one was even, one was odd. Tangent and cotangent, they're both odd. By the way, which one was even, sine or cosine? No, cosine. Cosine, <laughs> cosine was the even function. A lot of little details to keep straight here with these graphs. Let's go ahead, though, and uh, take a look at how we could manipulate the curves. Um, obviously, we have uh, done shifts vertically, shifts horizontally, compressions vertically, compressions horizontally, stretch vertically, stretch horizontally, amplitude changes. Well, that, I guess that is the vertical stretch. Uh, we've talked about inversions. All kinds of stuff. Let's do that with cotangent and cotangent before we move on to the last of our trig ratios, of course, secant and cosecant, who have been waiting patiently for their turn to come up. Write this down on your graph paper if you would. F of x is equal to negative 2 cotangent of x. F of x equals negative 2 cotangent of x. Set up your graph grid. like to start with key points. Cotangent, key points, class. 
Patrick Quentin. And then in between those, of course, we have one and one. one. <clears throat> but we're going to invert the curve, so. Um, switch the signs. Switch the signs. And we're going to stretch the curve by two. So negative two is going to be two times three bars. There we go. And that's the only changes, right? There's no shifts of any kind. We're not bumping it up, bumping it down, bumping it to the left, bumping it to the right. None of that. We're not compressing, stretching anything horizontally. That's our changes. So we're still going to start at the beginning with our asymptote. Three boxes later. Three boxes later. Three boxes later. And three boxes later. And again, just a reminder, by the way, technically we're about a half a box off by the time we get to 2 pi. Okay, so a computer-generated graph is going to be ever so slightly different from this. Halfway between the asymptote and the zero, we need to be all the way down at negative, negative 2. So halfway should be down at negative 2. Halfway between the next zero and asymptote, two. positive 2. And then we'll do the same thing again in quadrants 3 and 4. And again, it'd be really easy to just do a straight line between these. We don't want to do that, though. You might recall that beside the 0, we had the square root of 3 over 3, which is approximately 0.6. But we're doubling all of that, so that would be about 1.2-ish. So I'm going to come down on this box about 1.2 and go up about 1.2. Down about 1.2, up about 1.2. And you might remember near the asymptotes, we had square roots of 3, which is approximately 1.7. If we were to double that, we get about 3.4. Actually, we'd actually run up to about 3.5. So I could, if I wanted to, come to negative 3.5 and positive 3.5 near the asymptotes. Again, this is if it were graded. You take time to you know, get all those other little values to make sure you get it really good. And again, I would recommend always starting at zero and approaching the asymptotes, not starting at the asymptotes. So I start here, and it's going to be a very gradual approach here. It's still a good ways off that asymptote there. And again, that's the benefit of having the extra points. Helps you just be that little bit more accurate. And I'm going to retrace just to make it look nice and smooth. And there we go. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side for quadrants three and four. By the way, I have found going down is easier than going up. So what I would do is flip the paper over so you're going down. I can't flip the chalk, but I'm forced to still go up. But going down is always easier than going up. So strategy tip for you there. All right. Questions on this? Questions on this? And by the way, you're looking at it like, I thought the tangent curve was the one that went up. Yeah, remember we flipped it? Cotangent is supposed to go down, so flipped. All right, questions? All right, let's do another one. And uh, for this one, we may, let's do a new graph grid. Uh, f of x is equal to negative 1 plus the tangent of x halves minus pi fourths. Negative 1 plus the tangent of x over 2 minus pi over 4. things we need to do before we start analyzing much of anything. Thoughts? Simplify what's in the parentheses. Yeah, remember it said, we said inside the parentheses for sine and cosine, you couldn't have anything with the x. It had to be a plain old x. 
The same thing's gonna have to be true here. That X better be by itself. What is with the X right now directly? A one half. So to get it out, we have to do what with the one half? Mm. Factor out the half, right? Because we're not solving an equation where we're gonna do things to both sides, right? If they were both sides, we say multiply everything by two. We're just trying to get the one half out. So we're literally gonna factor out the one half. When you pull a half out of an X half, so you just get X. What about if you pull a half out of a negative pi over four? Negative pi over two. Okay, Chris. <laughs> so we end up with the positive tangent of one half of x minus pi over two. Of course, we still have the negative one out here at the beginning. Questions on that step? All right, now we're ready to analyze. Starting with tangent. Well, tangent means what key points? Zero, a, zero, a, zero. Or the way Quentin would say it, which I like better, zero, asymptote zero, asymptote zero. Um, and of course, in between there, of course, we're gonna have the, uh, the one and the negative one and the one and the negative one, right? Um, what are we changing to our tangent curve, though? Mm. We're shifting it down, how far? One. One, two boxes, but going down one. Okay, so that's important. What else are we doing? Uh, the horizontal side. Which direction? Forward. We're shifting it forward how far? One, three boxes. Pi over two, three boxes. And then there's one more change, and it's right here, this one half. The value that's multiplied by the x or by the quantity including the x changes our period. Change. period. Now we said that this is our b value, right? And period is normally 2 pi over b, but for tangent and cotangent, it's not going to be 2 pi over b class pi over b is our period. So since b is 1 half, it's going to be pi over a half, which is 2 pi. 2 pi. 2 pi. pi over 1 half equals 2 pi. So all of this is going to be done by the time we get to 2 pi. So we're shifting down, we're shifting forward, and we're going to take until we get to 2 pi to finish 1 period. Again, this is the second period through. All of this is going to take 2 pi. All right, so let's start by drawing your x-axis. And again, you're shifting forward, so start your x-axis a little further back than you usually would, just to make it easier to shift forward in a moment. You might also shift your normal x-axis maybe a little higher than normal. It doesn't have to be much, though. We're only going down one, but if you're wanting to make things just, uh, you know, perfectly easy as possible. One, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. I have a little more room in the negative because I'm going down that direction. There's pi over two. That's where I'm about to put my new axis. Pi, three pi over two, two pi. I'm going to go ahead and label the five pi over two. And then I've got room. I'll put the three pi on there as well just for the fun of it. All right. So I'm going to start with the shifts, right? Start by shifting down and put your x prime axis down there. Then let's shift forward and put your f of x prime axis. So this is my new origin right here. This is, we're ignoring the yellow, we're focused on the white. This is my origin right here. We're going to start at zero. zero. And I'm going to end the whole period at this 0, 2 pi later, which is actually going to be at 5 pi over 2 relative to the real axis, but 2 pi, 12 boxes later along my x prime axis. Halfway in between those two zeros, I'm going to have the asymptote. That's going to fall at 3 pi over 2. There's my asymptote. Halfway between 0 and asymptote. One, and on the other side, negative one. Now normally, one box would be my square root of three over three, or my point six. But I'm stretching everything out double boxes, right? So I'm gonna go over two boxes to my point six. And then normally, the box next to the asymptote is 1.7. I'm gonna go two boxes away from the asymptote, go up 1.5.7.
And you'll notice that when you connect these points, it's a much more gradual curve because it's been stretched out. The same thing's going to happen in what is a stretched out second quadrant. Again, you're only looking at half of what we normally draw, because we normally draw two complete periods. Here, we only have room to draw one complete period of the tangent, with the asymptote in the middle of the two sections. Questions on that? Any questions, tangent or cotangent? Going once, no questions. Going twice, no questions. All right, let's go to f of x equals the secant of x. f of x equals the secant of x. I'm treating secant and cosecant like the redheaded stepchild, just ignoring them completely. My apologies if any of you watching are redheaded stepchildren. My apologies if any of you are red. Just kidding, I have nothing against redheads. All right. Um, in case my niece watches this next year. All right. <laughs> She's not redheaded, but her sister is. <laughs> All right, uh, f of x equals the secant of x. Here's the key that I think is going to help you so much, okay? There's a lot of different strategies I guess we could use. This is the one I've used, and I feel like it's helped my students. It definitely helps me. Start by plotting cosine. Start by plotting cosine. Obviously, we know secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. And if you can see the cosine, you can flip the cosine. It's kind of how I look at this. So go ahead and set up another graph grid there in your, uh, in your, on your graph paper. And this is where graph paper notebooks are particularly helpful. I'm going to show you what I mean by this. I'm going to, instead of giving you all the steps and then doing it, we're going to kind of do it incrementally. I think that'll help us be more effective. So we're going to start with our basic cosine curve, but we're going to plot it very lightly. Because obviously it's not really part of the graph, but it's sure going to help us to see what we're doing. So I'm going to go blue on the cosine, because blue is a little bit of a darker color, won't show up quite as bright. And I know, oh, didn't finish setting up my graph grid though. One, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, pi over two, pi, root pi over two, two, pi. All right, so we know that the cosine curve starts at one, it goes to zero, negative one, zero, one, right? And we kind of come down, and it goes back up. I think of that might be too light. I don't even know if that shows up on <laughs> the screen for YouTube. So I will go ahead. I'll go ahead and dark, make it a little darker. You go ahead and keep it nice and light there on your, at your seats. But I'm going to make it too light for the, for the screen to even see it. Yeah, you can see it now. All right, so there's my cosine curve. We're going to flip everything on the cosine. Well, question, what do you get when you flip a 1? Negative 1. Nope, one. A one. You still get a one. So one is going to stay one. When you take the reciprocal of one over one, you get one over one. What about when you take the reciprocal of negative one? One. Negative, negative one over one. So that stays a negative one. And this one, of course, is going to also stay a one. What do you get when you flip a zero? Zero. One. Zero over one becomes undefined. undefined. So the zeros become asymptotes. So the one and negative one don't change, but the, uh, the zeros do change. So what are my key points then for the secant curve? One, asymptote, negative one, asymptote, one. Same thing as cosine, except instead of zeros, it's asymptotes, right? Instead of one, zero, negative one, zero, one. One asymptote, negative one, asymptote, one. Make sense? But there's some other things, because remember, we used to have these little, like a 0.5 here, negative 0.5, negative 0.5, which I missed, and 0.5, which I missed. 
Well, 0.5 is a half, right? What do you get if you flip a half? Two. So instead of a one half, I get a two. Negative a half, negative two. Negative a half, negative two. Half, two. And so when I connect the dots with a curve, I'm going to come up through the two and approach but not touch the asymptote. Come down, approach but don't touch. I'm going to retrace here. Come down, approach but don't touch. Come up here, approach but don't touch. And to me, if I can see the cosine, I can see that. And of course, I can always go through, if I drew it lightly, and just go through and erase the old cosine curve. And there we have the secant curve. Now, if I were to keep going, we realize that as you can keep going around, this first quadrant is going to replicate itself. So I'd have this, and then I'd have an asymptote. And then this is going to replicate itself. And then I'm going to have another asymptote. And then this is going to replicate itself. Or I could go backwards and allow this to replicate itself. And then I have an asymptote. And then this would replicate itself. Do you get the idea? Okay. So let's think about some things here very quickly. Where's the symmetry? On the f of x axis, right? It's going to mirror on opposite sides. And then here matches, and then here matches, and then here matches, right? So if it's symmetric to the f of x axis, that means that secant is a in an even function. Well, that makes sense, right? Considering it's reciprocal, cosine is even, it makes sense that secant would be even also, right? So it's an even function, symmetric to the f of x axis. We already got the key points here, though I kind of jumped in the middle of my key points with this extra graph. Um, what about the, uh, the domain of the secant? Well, it does this, right, just a U and an N, a U and an N, a U and an N, all the way down, right, to infinity, all the way back to negative infinity. So we'd say the domain is all real numbers, except where points are undefined, except at the asymptotes. So we'd have to say except at, well, where are our asymptotes? Pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, n being odd. n pi over 2 and n is odd. Sounds just like tangent, doesn't it? And it is, in fact, the exact same domain as the tangent. What about the range? What about the range? Well, it's not like tangent where it's right? It's got ooh. <laughs> ooh. Okay, right? So it, 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 it does go up to infinity, right? And it does go down to negative infinity, but the graph hits this wall, so to speak, and reverses course. And it never comes inside here. Basically, wherever cosine goes, it don't, right? Except it does touch the one and it does touch the negative one. How might we write the range? One to the one to one and negative one. Good, negative infinity to negative one with a bracket and then bracket one to infinity. I will put the negative before the positive so it's listed in order on the number line. But logically speaking, the way you picture it, yeah, one to infinity and then negative one down to negative infinity. But the best way would be negative infinity to negative one, one to infinity. And there's my range for the curve. What about the period? Well, you realize that this is not the full curve because there's the piece that goes down and then there's the piece that goes up. Then it repeats with another piece down, it repeats with another piece up. So right here is a full, is a full period, right? Or, well, from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, how big is that? That's 2 pi. You could also argue from here to here is the same because notice it just repeats this when it gets here anyway, right? So it's kind of like this piece has been chopped in half. Part of it is over here, part of it's there. But to, 
If by 2 pi it is done, every 2 pi it's going to repeat. So the period, like the cosine, its reciprocal function is 2 pi. Questions on the secant curve? All right, guess what comes next? Okay. Cosecant. Cosecant. Yeah, we just do cotangent. Oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cotangent. Now look what you made me do. Cosecant. <laughs> Your evil influence. All right, cosecant of x. f of x equals the cosecant of x. What do you think we might do to help us visualize this graph? Let's start with sine. Let's start with sine, okay? So uh, let's plot the sine curve, so another graph for it. You never enjoyed graphing so much in your life, did you? Nope. Mm -hmm. Ethan's like, I never enjoyed graphing at all in my life. Hey, at least it's not just boring straight lines. You remember now to want everything with straight lines? Mm -hmm. That was so boring. Like, aren't you glad it's not straight lines anymore? We're getting cool stuff. Starting to miss that stuff, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Too much noise over there, Chris. You've been doing the uh, Zacharias thing in the Bible. Remember when uh, you were, uh, Zacharias couldn't speak and so he had to write stuff down on the tablet? Yeah. Sorry, he's so dumb. No, he's, he's got his tablet out. He's got his little tablet. So he's writing. He's writing. Yeah. He's dumb. Yeah. No, actually, he's been doing really well. I think he's been paying attention better today than he ever has before. <laughs> yeah, he might have to do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so we're going to start by plotting um, get the blue out again. The sine curve. And of course, the sine curve. Remember, starts at zero, goes up to one, back down to zero, back down to negative one, back up to zero, right? So there's our basic sine curve. Please no. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> do it. You want to. How about as, an as needed basis? We'll do as needed. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. So just like we did for the secant, everywhere we see a zero class, we're going to replace it with. An asymptote. I don't do yellow here. Everywhere we see a zero, we're going to replace with an asymptote. So we're going to start with the asymptote because sign starts at zero. At pi, we're going to put an asymptote. At two pi, we're going to put an asymptote. Everywhere we see a one, which is only one spot. One. <laughs> Everywhere we see a negative one. Negative one. So literally, our key points are going to be good. Asymptote one, asymptote negative one, asymptote. But then again, remember we had the one halves, which I missed there, and the one halves. Oh man, I got my first one halves on both of them. The second one halves, I was way off. Um, anyway, so our one halves, we flip those to become twos. So 2, 2, and in quadrants 3 and 4, negative 2, negative 2. And then curve up toward the asymptote, curve up toward the asymptote, down toward the asymptote, and down toward the asymptote. And notice this is the same thing we saw with the seeking curve, right? There's the u and the n. Let's consider for a moment the domain. What would be the domain of the cosecant curve? All real numbers except when uh, n pi over 2 and n pi over 2. And all real numbers except n pi over 2 when n is even. And I just realized I think I'm not on the screen anymore. I am not. About that. Let's go with that right there. Okay. And again, you realize we've got the 0 pi, the 1 pi, which is 2 pi over 2, the 2 pi, which is 4 pi over 2. So we see the pattern here. Of course, we, we realize it's going to keep going infinitely, right? Even though I didn't draw all the little end u's and n's, we see that it would keep going. What about the range? Same thing as the last one, right? Yeah. Negative infinity up to the negative 1, stop, and then 1 up to the infinity. Try to draw a better infinity symbol there. 
What about the period? Two pi. Two pi again, right? Because this u then n is just going to repeat as we go back again. Another u, then another n, u, then n. So every two pi, we see the complete curve here. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, where's the symmetry going to be? Well, here's the u, here's an n. What would go after the f of x axis? It would be negative again, wouldn't it? So we'd end up having uh, here and here. Um, and uh, so uh, we over here. So we'd end up coming down like this and like this and approaching another massive joke. So where's the symmetry? Uh, one. Oh. Can I have the x axis again? No, if it were the f of x axis, you'd have two ups next to each other. Mm. Here it goes up, here it goes down. Mm. Here it's empty, here it's empty. Here, here it's down, here it's up. Here it's up, here it's, you know, here it's empty, here it's empty. So it's mirroring across the okay. origin. origin. Right? Well, it's a function, so it can't mirror the x-axis, but it mirrors across the origin, which means cosecant is an odd function, just like sine. So of all the functions we've talked about, only two have been even. The secant has been even, and the cosine's been even. Everything else has been odd. That's an important fact to keep in mind for later. Questions on the cosecant curve. All right. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, mess with some stuff here. And we'll end with two more graphs. Write this down if you would in another graph grid. f of x equals 1 minus the secant of x minus pi over 6. f of x equals 1 minus the secant of x minus pi over 6. I like to start with my key points. It's secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. cosine. So I'm going to start. What are cosine's key points again? Uh, one, zero, negative one, zero, one. All right. So what are secant's key points? Um, so mm. One. one asymptote. There we go, just change your zeros to asymptotes, right? All right, now, what are we going to change with all this stuff? Invert. We're going to flip everything. So where we had ones, negative one. Where we have a negative one, positive one. Also, Is it a vertical shift? Vertical shift, how much? Uh, one. One. Up. Up. Now shift up one. What else are we going to do? Move um, pi over six to the right. Forward pi over six, which is one box. One box. This is two boxes, because one is two boxes, but shift forward a single box. All right, which isn't very much shift, so I'll probably just set up my graph grid like a normal one. All right, here we go. start with our shift. Let's shift it up one. New x prime axis. And let's shift forward pi over six. Mm -hmm. 
Everything we do is going to be based off of these new axes. So this is my new starting point, my new origin. We're going to start at negative 1 relative to this. So negative 1 is going to be right here on the old x-axis. Three boxes later, class, we need asymptote. Three boxes later, positive 1 relative to this. So that actually puts us at 2 technically, but 1 in relation to this. Three more boxes. And then three more boxes. One. Or negative one. <laughs> so that means down here. Now again, if we were graphing the cosine, something like that, as a horrible looking cosine curve. I hate to receive a grade for that. Uh, but that would be our inverted cosine curve, right? We've shifted the cosine. We flip the cosine, right? But we're going to take the reciprocal of all of this. Well, we've already taken the reciprocal of the 1 and negative 1 because it still is 1 and negative 1, right? The other point I like to take the reciprocal of class are everywhere we have the, the 0.5, so the 1 halves. So I like to flip those and turn them into 2s. So this is neg negative a half, one box. I want to go all the way down to negative 2, four boxes. It's actually negative 1, but relative to my x prime axis, negative 2. I also want to take these two positive halves and make them 2, so up four boxes. And then this negative half and make it a negative 2. So we can see the reciprocal happening here. As this is going up, getting, this is getting smaller, it's flipping the other way. As this is going down, it goes up, this goes up, down, this goes up, goes down, uh, goes up, from there goes down. So kind of see that reciprocal action. Questions on that? All right. We don't have time for one more, so I'm going to give you an extra credit instead. Okay, so some points on your next test here. Homework is going to be to keep working on that practice test. The ACT practice test is due tomorrow. Okay, so continue working on that or start working on that if you haven't started yet. But uh, for your uh, extra credit, if you want, this isn't required, though we will start by looking at it tomorrow anyway, so you might as well do it and get some extra credit for it. f of x equals 2 times the cosecant of x thirds. 2 times the cosecant of x over 3 will be your extra credit. We'll take a look at that in our next lesson, and then we'll go over your ACT practice test. We'll probably finish going over the ACT practice test in uh, the next lesson after that. I guess that'd be lesson 48 on Monday. We'll continue looking at that. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and you are dismissed.